Income Tax 2022-2023 Self-Employment SE Tax Example Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example, Form 1040, populated using Lacert Tax Software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the Form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson, no dependents, the income coming in from the Schedule C to line eight here. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Let's see that flow through process on the Schedule C business income. That's not the Schedule C, it's right there, which is in essence an income statement. Income minus expenses gets to the net income, 100000 in this case, flowing through to the Schedule 1. And there it is, the 100000 line 3. That flows through to the bottom of the Schedule that flows through to the 1040 page number one line number eight so there is that item then let's jump to the taxes which are going to be the equivalent of the payroll taxes the self-employment taxes which are on page two we have the normal federal income tax but also the other taxes down here on line 23 that's our point of focus this time how did that get there well that came from the schedule c where we have the net income that was then used that 100,000 to calculate schedule SE self-employment tax and then they calculated the self-employment tax right there the 14,129 that then pulled into the schedule 2 which is right here on the schedule 2 and that pulled into page 2 of the form uh, 1040 right here then we also get to deduct half of that, which we'll get into more detail in a second, but that is seen on page one right there. So where did that come from? Well, that came from the Schedule C that had the 100,000 that then calculated the Schedule SE based on that of the 14,129, and then we got to deduct half of it, 7,065 that flowed into the Schedule 1 page number two which is the adjustments to income the above the line deductions of the 7065 that totals up at the bottom there flows into page one and there it is on the 7065 we've got the 12,950 standard deduction nothing unusual there and then we've got this other qualified business income deduction which once again is basically taxed or calculated based on the schedule c i'm not going to get into that now we'll let the software do the calculation for now 15997 significant calculation obviously gets us down to the 63988 if i go to page number two we got the federal income tax calculated as we would normally think then we added to that the self-employment tax to get us to the 23821 and then we're going to say that we had estimated payments of 30,000 to get to the 6,179. So there's our starting point. Let's put that into our tax software or mirror it over here. We've got the 100,000 that we started up top with. We have the tax calculated on it and that is populated from the schedule S schedule C income statement 100,000. The tax is being calculated in our other taxes. I just populated it from the software. We'll dive into that in more detail this time, which pulled in to the tax line down here. Half of that tax then is an above the line deduction, which is being pulled in from the adjustments, taking half of the that other tax on other taxes divided by two. 
which is being pulled in here. There's the 92936, which is mirrored in our software. And then we had the 12,950 standard deduction, the other, the qualified business income, which I pulled directly from the software, just data inputted in there. And then the 63988, we're off by a dollar, that's okay. Page two, doing the calculation uh, using the software, 9692, which I pulled in, in. And then the 14129 was pulled in that we looked at before, 23821 is our calculation. And then we get to the six, the 617, uh, the 6179. Okay, so our focus now is on the self-employment tax. So we might go into more depth on the calculation of the self-employment tax in a future presentation, but let's just understand it in concept right now and do a little, little bit of, of the calculation with it. You can imagine scenarios where it gets kind of more complex if you've got multiple Schedule Cs or multiple items subject to self-employment tax and you have um, a W-2 income possibly subject to self-employment tax. So we might talk some more about those situations later, but the general idea is that if you have Schedule C business, then you're not only going to have the income tax, which obviously we would think we would have when populated in the Form 1040, because that's what we're used to dealing with. Deal with it. But possibly always also have, and most likely have, if we have income, the self-employment tax. So the self-employment tax is on the Schedule SE, in essence, taking our net income and, put, and taxing the net income. So remember, this is... The way to understand this in your mind is say this is they're trying to mirror what is happening in a payroll tax type of situation between an employer and an employee but in our situation we are kind of the employer and the employee so if you imagine the schedule c then we've got the income minus the expenses is the net income what we don't have in the expenses what would be on a schedule c because you would have employees we don't have W-2 income. You can imagine a situation where the IRS forced us, as they do if you have like a, an S corporation situation, to pay ourselves a W-2 so that we can then calculate the payroll taxes normally with the 941s, the 940s, the W-2s, and so on, do that whole thing. But they don't make us do that on a schedule if, if we're the only kind of employee of our business because that would be very tedious to do. So what they're going to say is we're going to, they're going to say, we think that you are an employee of your business and all the net income that you receive Sean and Lee, I think I received something from them. A stun gun. Received is we're going to assume coming from your labor, your work, and we're going to call that income. So that's kind of similar to W2 income, of course, because it's going to flow through the first page of the 1040 and, and be taxed, you know, as ordinary income. It's just not coming from a W2. And then they're going to say, we're going to treat you like, like you're an employee of your business. And we paid you that 100,000 in W2 income in essence. And we're going to, we're going to call it not payroll taxes, but self-employment tax. So now I've got to deal with the self-employment tax based on my net income. Now note that that could be good or bad. If you're a con, if you have a decision to be a, either a contractor or W-2 employee, there are pros and cons because when we calculate the self-employment tax on this 100,000, if, for example, you were an employee and got paid 100,000, your self-employment taxes would be far less because you're only gonna be paying the employee portion. But, but and, and you're gonna be paying more if, if that 100,000, if you had the same 100,000 here. But if you're a business, you get to deduct expenses which you don't get to do if you're a W-2 employee. And of course you have more freedom as a contractor. So it's not a cut and dry thing. There's pros and cons. The government's trying to format things so that everybody has an incentive to be in a hierarchy employee employer situation, because that's where they have the most control. That's where they can force the employers to do the withholdings and uh, issue the W-2s. So they kind of like that situation. You can imagine anytime you talk with some IRS documentation, they're pushing, they're leaning towards making a situation where there's an employee employer situation. You could see that with the gig work, for example, these days. 
They would like to force the gig work, which expanded and just exploded new entrepreneurial businesses. They would like to force that into a structural framework of employee employer situations so that they can they can get paid W-2 employees and make the employers their tax collectors, right? So, so just be aware of that when you're looking at this stuff. So if I go to the Schedule C then, I'm sorry, this, the oh. SE, we've got the 100,000 and there's a little bit, a little bit more messy of a calculation, but the general idea is you can see that there's, there's a $147,000 cap on the social security part and the Medicare part isn't capped. And you basically get down to the 14,129. Again, we'll jump into the more detail later, but you can see here, the general rate is the 12.4% for social security, Medicare, and uh, the 2.9% for the, for the uh, I'm sorry, 12.4 for social security and 2.9 for the Medicare. Although they did a little bit of a reduction here from the 100 to 92,350. So it's not really exact, but imagine if you were a W-2 employee, for example, you would be paying 0.062, your half of self-employment tax, uh, plus 0.0145, your half of the Medicare. You'd be paying that amount on the full 100,000. So you'd only be paying 7,650, which is a little over half because again, they did this business of bringing it from 100 down to the, to the 92,350 here. So you're paying more if you had that same 100,000 as, as a Schedule C versus a W-2 type of situation. But if you have a Schedule C, you get you get to deduct you know expenses, and that's that's how it's kind of lined up here. So then, so there's th that 14,129 1, pulls into the Form 1040, page two, and here's our federal income tax, and then there's the self-employment tax. Most people are not used to seeing that tax on the Form 1040 being when they're a W-2 employee because you think of the Form 1040 as just calculating the, the federal income tax. Because if you were a W-2 employee, you would have the data input on the W-2. In other words, when you look at the W-2, you've got the wages, the, the federal withholding, the social security and the social security tax but the social security and social security tax usually don't have any impact on the form because they've already been taken care of. The W-2 is more of like an informational type of return unless there was a problem, like you had multiple W-2s and it went over the cap. Okay, so that's, that's the general rule. Now, if I compare this to what happens on a schedule, on a, on a C corporation, it's still not exactly fair to the sole proprietor because now you're saying, look, you're, you're treating me as if I'm an employee and employer for that 100,000. But if it was in a C corporation with an employee and employer, the C corporation would get to deduct half their portion of the social security and Medicare. So I should get to deduct part of the social security and Medicare and you do. So they tried to mirror that, but you can't deduct it on the schedule C because if I deducted it up here on the schedule C, it would change the 100,000 creating a circle reference. So we have to deduct it somewhere else. Therefore, we're gonna get half of that amount that we calculated, which is 7,065. That's why that pulls up to schedule one, page two, where we got that 7,065. So now we're getting half of it to be deducted. And again, the point is they're trying to mirror what happens for payroll taxes on uh, a C corporation type of business. Now, the other side of this that gets a little bit messy is that your this social security is being paid into is being paid into the social security for the taxpayer. So that means that it's going to affect the benefits that you're going to get. Hopefully, if social security is still around by the time you re retire. So you want to be able to maximize your social security benefits. As we saw in prior presentations, that gets a little messy when, for example, you have a married couple that has a Schedule C business and you're trying to maximize the amount that's being paid into the Social Security between the two of them because even though they're paying taxes on one as one, a tax return, the Social Security is tied to 
the social the social security number right it's tied to each individual so we talked about in prior presentations that situation where you might be able to uh, have a schedule c that is that is uh, applying out to joint between both of them if you're in a community property state or possibly a uh, breakout with two schedule c's the amount that's going to each individual so that you can uh you can adjust the amount that should be going to the proper the proper social security payments which means that you'll end up with two of these two of these schedule se's so that it'll be applied to the proper social security number so that it'll pay into the social security system so that's going to be important and it's one of those things that you don't really think about when you're actually doing the tax preparation because you're trying to think about how much you're going to pay today and that doesn't really affect that calculation but it does affect the payout that you're going to get out of the social security at uh, the retirement age now the other thing that, to keep in mind is that uh, as this as this increases there's going to be a cap on the amount that is for social security so and that's where that 147 comes in so if i was to go over here and say let's say the schedule c income let's make this 180,000. so now my schedule c income is our 160 that's over the 147,000 cap so that means that even though i made 160,000 for the amount that's attributable to the social security i'm only going to be paying tax on 147,760, uh, right and then and then for the amount so that means the amount that's paying for social security is 147,000 times one point uh point one two four that's where they're coming up with this 18228 and then the the other instead of it being 160,000 times point one two four right and then the amount that's the medicare part is going to be taxed on the full 160,000 times the point two times the point oh two nine times the 0 0.029 so there's a cap on how much on how much you pay and that cap is of course due to the fact that as you pay more money into the social security security numbers tax records you're not getting any more benefit because we're thinking of the social security more like a retirement program for everybody a federal retirement program and so if you go over a certain threshold you're paying a lot more money in but you're not getting any more benefit from the payout that's going to happen at retirement is the general thought process there now things can also get a little bit messy if you had a situation where i had like w-2 employee wages as well let's say i worked as a w-2 employee e2 so now i've got let's say i made you know uh 50 000 here and whatever withholdings and now i paid in another 3100 already with the wages from the W-2 uh, wages. So, so now I've got this situation where I'm actually over the threshold because I paid in with the W-2 wages and I paid in with the self-employment tax. So you can see what kind of happened here. They've got on box uh, 8A, total social security wages tips uh, that, that were paid in if so if the 147 or more skip line so there's the 50,000 that brings it to uh the the 97 so now they took the cap of 147,000 minus 50,000 gets us to that 97,000 that they multiply times the 0.1224 to get to what 97,000 times 0.124 to get to the 12,028 so that gets a little bit messy there as well and notice what happened is they they actually they actually lowered the self-employment because now now you can see that i paid into self-employment with my wages but with my wages if i was working for someone else i only paid half into the self-employment see the tax being calculated here for self-employment is fifty thousand times 0 0.062 that's where they're coming up with that one three thousand one hundred so so now I would like them to it's actually the favor they did it the favorable way here meaning 
they they took the wages that I paid at the lower half rate and only only paid the employee portion and then lowered the amount of self-employment tax that I paid that I paid over here uh, that was over the cap based right because they could have they could have done it the other way that it would be diff- it would be more difficult to do that because the withholdings have already been taken but if I had to pay the wages over here on the self-employment I would have had to pay basically the employee and employer portion okay so that's the general idea uh, of the self-employment we might dive into the actual uh, calculations and maybe re- recreate the calculations on our Excel worksheet in a future presentation but the general idea that is the general idea it is you want to think about it uh, similar. They're trying to mirror the situation for payroll taxes with the self-employment tax. They're trying to take your Schedule C and say your net income is now kind of like W-2 income and that it's going to be subject to Social Security and Medicare, both on the employee and the employer side. That's what the, social, that's what the self-employment tax uh, basically is. That's what this worksheet is basically doing. They're kind of calculating your your... Your, your Social Security and Medicare in a similar way uh, as with, an, with a corporation employee employer situation. And then they're trying to adjust for the problems that happen, including you should get to deduct half of that if it was an employee employer situation. And that's why you get the deduction on the Schedule 1, uh, page 2. And then now that you're paying into the, to the, to the Social Security, you also just want to think about what's going to be the benefits you're going to get when you get the money back, especially when you have more complex situations where multiple people are involved, like a spouse is involved, and that they, their their benefits will be based on on each social security number, not as as one entity, one married unit.